This is great news, Darren Kavanoki. I have been waiting it to is. report this news. I mean, and you've got the smile. Anybody, you know, when a guy like this gets captured, has a big smile. But I want you to tell me what he's, you know, what's in store for Sean Williams tonight. From the moment that the cuffs are on him, out at the 7-Eleven under that tarp, what happens next? Well, he's certainly not going to be afforded any other opportunities to pull his little escape artistry acts. Um, you know, there. What's that expression, Ashley? You know, fool me once, uh, shame on, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Which, whichever way that goes, it ain't going to be well for um, for our uh, <laughs> the the center of our story. He's certainly not going to be given any chance. There's no wiggle room coming for this guy. And you know, it's interesting as I sit here and I put on my my lawyer hat. Um, yeah. Escaping from custody, besides being now a, a separate criminal charge that he faces, um, that's going to be introduced in any and all of his other trials because, because that kind of flight is consciousness of guilt. So whatever his defense was to these underlying crimes, and my God, it sounds like there's a special place in hell for this guy, but I, I, I just can't even imagine the difficult assignment that his defense lawyer is going to have coming in, not only trying to defend the underlying case, but then add to that, that he escaped while facing these charges. It just, it just does not look good for the man. So, Darren, um, yeah, you're right. Escape from custody. But I, I just have to ask you one more question about charges, because I keep saying that they found a thumb drive in a vehicle when they arrested him many months ago. And on that thumb drive, police say, are the images of the rapes of at least 52 women if not all of them, many of them or most of them were unconscious. They had to actually do facial recognition to try to contact these victims and let them know they were victims. Um, but I'm curious, Darren, why those rapes aren't charged. Why is it that we are just continuing to talk about he's suspected to have done these rapes, but he's not charged with having done those rapes? Well, they may ultimately be. Um... I mean, they're, especially in the world of sex crimes, it's not only do they have to identify the victims, but in, in many states, if there's the victim of a, if, if a victim of a sex crime does not want to participate in the legal proceedings, prosecutors will not bring charges. It's one of the areas where if you're a witness to a crime or even if you're a, a crime victim, the prosecutors can compel you to testify uh, against the defendant. Not so when it comes to prosecuting sex offenses. So I don't know if that's an element that's at play. But ultimately, prosecutors are concerned with bringing charges that they can prove each and every element beyond a reasonable doubt. That's their ethical standard. They have to believe that they can prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt at the time they file charges. So, you know, I'd really want to unpack some of the details of that case to, to look at why some of those charges aren't brought. Certainly having that kind of evidence that you describe on a thumb drive, assuming that they can identify those individuals, it's obviously, it's really damning evidence. And I know that, that Williams has charges that he's facing both in federal and in state court. This guy is going to be quite busy uh, defending himself for um, you know, what sounds like decades, if not hundreds of years. One other thing that's very uh, unique when it comes to sexual offenses is oftentimes there will be mandatory uh, consecutive sentencing rather than be somebody being allowed to serve concurrent sentences if they're convicted of, say, multiple counts. Concurrent sentences are where you can serve a bunch of time all at once. Consecutive sentences is that you've got to serve all your time on one case before you begin serving time on another. And, um, and so th this guy, um, I, I, doubt he, I doubt he's going to be uh, eating any 7-Eleven hot dogs or anything else uh, as a free man anytime soon. You stole my line. I was literally going to wrap up with you by saying, <laughs> I hope that hot dog was a good one. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.